One of the situations that can arise in a close reading is whether it be in your preferred text or even in your second choice or third choice, is that you encounter an extract or a full text, if it's the poem, that you can't get a handle on, that is not allowing you to form a, a coherent understanding. What I'd like to remind you of is that then leaves you scope to be doing an interpretation of that text where possibly incoherence or a sense of disorientation are actually what the text is striving for. You would be quite thrown, for example, if you were to receive a T.S. Eliot poem in close reading conditions because you'd be looking co for coherence and you'd be looking to unpack symbols and you would find that very, very difficult to do. And it's only because of that possibility that you, you are aware of, having studied Eliot, that you are able to say these are ambiguous symbols. These symbols don't allow for easy resolution. So when you see something that might look disorienting or disjointed or abstract, recognise that these things are actually techniques. The other one as well is you might be reading a poem or a piece of fiction and you might be going, I can't see any language techniques here. There's not, I'm, I'm, look, I'm trying to find similes or stuff like that and I can't find any. That in itself is a technique, direct language basic language, short sentences. You ask yourself, why would an author be favouring these things over the kind of rich, complex, lyrical language that we, we've come to associate with um, literature-style writing? So, often when we can't find a technique, it's because we're looking for a specific kind of technique or kind of style and when we can't see it, we assume there's nothing there. Whereas, in fact, there's plenty there. It's just of a different sort than what we were anticipating to find. So don't be afraid to argue that a text is somewhat elusive in its meaning, uh, complex, ambiguous, ambivalent, disjointed, that the language is very basic, frank, direct, unadorned, plain spoken. These are all devices an author can choose. So when you see language, try to describe what it is. Don't be blinded by what you are expecting to find. If you can do that, you leave arguably even the most difficult of, difficult of texts open to interpretation and being able to say a number of important things about it.